just taking on some water and I'm off to meet Dave and Josh. Dave and Josh, I refuse to call him Nipper as you know. Dave and Josh have gone to Chichester for the week. So that's Monday morning, half past ten, and I'm going to go and meet them for one night and they're going to cook me dinner tonight. That's good of them, isn't it? I hope it's Josh that's doing the cooking. I think it probably is. Looking forward to it, Josh. Well, look who I found. Hey! And uh, so Josh, they, they call you Nipper and I'm refusing to do it. <laughs> it's fine, Dave. No, it's not. You're not a Nipper in my eyes. Fiona, we did try coming in on your Ooh. priceless gift, uh, for which we're very grateful, but it uh, didn't seem to take three of us, so. Oh, yeah. So we're coming ashore, this is Thorny Island, isn't it? MOD land. I'm going off for a walk down there. Hugging this wall, try not to fall off. The problem is that Mr. Oliver doesn't like heights, so he's having to walk through the mud with his new shiny shoes on. So it's a bit of a letdown, really, isn't it, Dave? Getting your shoes, filthy. I see you. Uh, there he comes, he's up to, he's, we've, it's quite a slow journey this as he tiptoes along the edge. He's gone to get nachos, he's doing us nachos and then Josh, Josh has brought this monster steak again. So what are we having tonight Josh? So we've got uh, a ribeye steak, but we've also look, got. Look, this, look, look, look. I thought it was three steaks, but it's one. It's the huge. Bone-in sirloin chop is what it is. So it's yeah, bone-in sirloin steak, one kilo. Should be enough for the three of us, I hope. The only reason I ventured out in the cold of January to come to Chichester was because Josh was on board and he was going to be cooking. It's the only reason. That's very rude and very hard. Yeah. Somebody put an, a comment on our channel today and he said to the smart Dave and the handsome Dave, which one do you think you are? Both of them were me, were no, they? No, 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 one was one of each. Well, the smart one has to be me, but I'd have thought I was handsome as well. No, smart one was me, mate. You are joking. Smart one was me, handsome was you. Thick and handsome, smart and... Well, enough said. So how did you guys um, get on last night? It was it warm or cold? It was freezing. Tell them what we had to do on the deck before well, we left. Speak for yourself. Go I'll speak for well, myself. I the heads. What did you do on the deck? We couldn't even open the lockers yesterday to get the warps out because it was iced over. It was freezing, like really cold. Last night, first time in my life, I actually put the Angelac sleeping bag hood completely over my face had to endure my own breath that was not that was not good oh good grief that yeah was that was bad but that's how serious it was your breath kept me awake and you've been in the other <laughs> cabin before for the first time in my life and i am 100 percent serious here i accepted the use of a hot water bottle see there's a generation really, no really important fact for our american viewers fiona will back us up on this they're their partner if you ever go looking for a hot water bottle in Myers or Sears or any other store or grocery store, Davis. You, you'll not find them. Do you know where you find them? In the medical shelves 
and their colostomy devices, what we call a hot water bottle in the UK, is sold as a colonic irrigation device on the bottom shelf of Walmart or Myers. There's what, a little known fact. Can I, can I just ask the more pertinent question <laughs> to that point? What were you doing looking at the irrigation yeah. Why were you in the colostomy trying irrigation? Trying to find a hot water bottle in <laughs> Ohio sure. when we were frozen. There's a generation Oh. That don't know what a hot water bottle is. Exactly. So my grandkids will be most. Of, so explain what is a hot Let water bottle. Let me get one. You boil a kettle. It's really important you don't fill it when it's actually boiling. Take the stopper out. Pour the water in, and remember to gently burp it. Why? Because otherwise the pressure builds up, and when you're pouring it, it goes boiling water in your face. Done it once, never again. If you're a really club class hot water bottle owner, you get a little special tartan cover keeps it warmer longer and it looks beautiful I'm so sorry I had to put you through that I just wanted a short explanation as to what a hot water bottle was but I think we all know no, that. But, but before you go there Dave what American is your plan for tonight now? yes what is your, what is your plan, plan for well, tonight we, we, well said ad nauseum well said what's going to happen here Yeah, like that smug smile. No, 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 no. Yeah. When you said hot water bottle earlier, I thought, well, I think I've got a couple Josh, on board. He's got a physiology when he does this, and he was just doing it. The, the camera won't lie, he puts his hand on his stomach and he rubs it. That's what he actually does. <laughs> Yeah, hot water bottle, yeah. No, just, just you, you brought up hot water bottles. I thought, I think we've got a couple. I'll like, go and you dig them out. Belting over. I did go, yeah, bottle. and I've yeah. got two, so I'm going to use two tonight. Cash. The next merchandising offer we're going to send over to that lovely little Corinthian Yacht Club is signed hot water bottles. How about that? We keep getting lots of gifts from Fiona, but nobody else sends us gifts. No, come on, you miserable, tight-fisted bunch. All I said, <laughs> oh, hey, no. A, you can't call on no, that. No, I can. I said to Fiona, it's more blessed to give than receive. And out of the goodness of our heart, she's straight on it. Gary Mel, when he lives in Japan, he should be sending us stuff from Gary, Japan. Gary, yeah. What can he send us from Japan? Deep fried sushi, it wouldn't last, would it? Sake. 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 Yeah. Bottle yeah. of sake, Gary. Sake. Come on, Gaz. When you're out sailing with all that beautiful cherry blossom, remember us in the mud. I just went to get some salt for the steak. Oh, oh, that's disgusting. That's liquid. What is that? That's salt water. We're on the ocean, remember? Oh, it's disgusting. It's a salt pot day. Well, I, I, listen, I'm not responsible for what the weather does to sodium, Can right? I have, no, I am not responsible. I've never seen what... weather do that to sodium. Can I have um, three drips of salt on my steak, please, Josh? <laughs> you boys are very rude. To That's me. disgusting, maybe. No, it is not. It is. I just put, I just put it on is. the steak. This is why people think you're handsome, but you're not very smart. <laughs> Who said that? I want to I talk can't remember, to but somebody said the smart Dave and the handsome Dave. You you claimed on you claimed to be the handsome one in the last video. Oh, so yeah. that leaves me as the smart one. Mr. Oliver's a bit excited actually because he's now got AIS on his Navionics. So Josh is <coughs> he couldn't have done this himself, but fortunately he's got a technically competent son. Member of the family, oh, known by some as Nipper, but not me, who installed an AIS. Well, no, it was a, a Wi Fi stroke. What do you call it? So it's an AIS receiver <coughs> with a wireless hotspot so that the Navionics on the iPad can connect. Pick to it the up. Eyes. Yeah, can we just make the point that as my tool bag is better than his because. Your brother told you to buy oh, one better than sake. his. And as my monocular is better than his, because you wanted a better one. <laughs> yeah, so God. my AIS is better than his. Why? Uh, well, why is it better? Because it's got an external GPS. Well, it's got an internal GPS, which means disabled. It's got an external input from the icon exactly. GPS. Exactly. What, what, what are you moaning about? What are you moaning about? Whenever I cook you anything, never does the Lee Shaw's camera come The French out. onion soup, maybe. Yeah, I right told exactly. it, Yeah, no, I, I was... Uh, begrudgingly. I no, it wasn't to, begrudging. To, anyway, what's in the oven, Josh? Well, I so, had to take uh, the picture I myself. I think they're just Josh. about ready. What we have here is two cheese... This is, this is our starter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> 
two, two cheese two, nacho. Two, what two cheese cheddar. is it, John? So we've got a mature Canadian cheddar oh. and then mixed with a Glastonbury cheddar, which has got chili and uh, garlic and chili and garlic throughout the, the cheese. So and you provided the cheese and you I provided the one well of the done. Well and done. And I provided the nachos I've never and the seen, other cheese. I don't get food like this on Cool Runnings you normally. You always get food Not like normally, this. Not normally, I don't. Dad said, don't worry, son, I've got another salt dispenser. Why it's is it disgusting? Not... It's stuck to the side. <laughs> no, it's right. so wet in there. It's so wet in there. But it's also empty, Dave. Also, uh, can I just ask, biblically That's speaking, yeah. what do they say about when salt loses its it's saltiness? Fit neither for this it's, nor that, fit only for the dung It says dung it's fit or... neither for the field nor the dung heap. Salt, if it loses its saltiness. Yeah. So I would say that that salt has definitely lost its saltiness. And what do you expect me to do with it? Put it on. I'll go, and get, I'll go and get you some proper no, salt, Josh. If you are responsible for a meal and it needs salt, I expect you to bring it. Extraordinary, Josh. How big is it? So it's a kilogram, 1,000 grams. 1,000 grams. How much are we supposed to eat? So what you can do, you're going to cook it and then you're going to slice it so that we all... We can... Yeah. And so this is our sirloin and we have, to so compare it with, we've got a 32 day aged ribeye. So we can pair ribeye uh, and sirloin together. What's that doing? We're not having that tonight as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're having that tonight as well. Yeah, we, so we've got 1,000 grams plus... That's the 350 gram uh, ribeye. I don't know, Christ. This is, this is why, Mr. Oliver, your son comes on board and I join you. Yeah. I think... That's beautiful. That's just a little bit pink on that. The ribeye yeah. is perfect. a tiny bit pinker, but that is perfect. How's that then, DR? DO, I mean, DR. I'm DR, you're DO. <laughs> He's the smart one. <laughs> Is he asleep, Josh? Is he falling asleep? I think he has, yeah. Poor chap. Poor fella, he's missing all the fun. Gary Malm, do you think he's still the handsome one? Gary. Gary Malm. Gosh, what about Gary now? Gary? Don't even remember him. No, it's not even funny, is it? I'm cold, man. <laughs> Gary, Gary, he's falling asleep. He's falling asleep. No, I'm wide awake. Do you, th you still think he's the handsome one? Or yeah. now do you think that I'm the handsome and you the smart neither. one? I am handsome and smart. we have just there is uh, Mr. Rebets on his way back to us having left quite probably an hour ago um, and the reason why it's amusing is this video is shot on his iPhone which he must have realized he had left behind which we knew about and we tried to ring him <laughs> <laughs> we tried to radio him, but he doesn't sell with his radio on. And so he's obviously worked it out and is motoring his way back to us now. What do you make of the situation? Well, we have this point system. This is about a minus 30, very roughly. Um, he's got, I don't know how far he's got. He's probably got from Thorny Channel all the way to Langstone, I'm guessing. And he's had to hot foot about to pick up his phone, which he's forgotten. And we've got some beef short rib for him. Yeah, very nice short rib, look. Yeah. It's making quite some way coming towards us. How far did you get, Dave? I'm just beyond his head. It could have been a lot worse, but it was very frustrating. So there's the beef short rib. Oh. I won't throw it, Dave. Thanks, buddy. Sorry, Still guys. Still recording. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah. Anyway, that was, that was planned. I left the boys after breakfast this morning and uh, we have very severe fog but then it cleared and now I have got maybe 150 yards of visibility <laughs> so turning back and uh, hopefully scrounge another night's food off of the fellas.
I'll see if they are pleased to see me or mightily disappointed. Certainly not safe to travel back through the busy shipping lanes of the Solent in this. So another night it is. So I'm being followed by Mr. Oliver, or the two Olivers in call running. And uh, we've decided to come up Bosom Channel. Pick up one of these boys near the village and uh, see if we can get some pub grub tonight. And um, I've been christened by the waitress Steve. Yeah, Not he's got another sure. new name, so he's Flycatcher, Lord of the Flies, and Soggy. Soggy now Steve. But he's now being called Steve. Should have shown this meal when it was first delivered, but we were so hungry and we were so delicious looking, we just got straight into it and then realised that. Have you got some there? I do. The remains of a Wagyu burger. Wagyu burger. So this is seared both sides two minutes. Yeah. Pan lid. Broil it in its own juices for six minutes. Five or six minutes. Yeah. And let it rest for three to four. It's absolutely delicious. Dry fry the brioche. Juna signing off just to say thanks for a nice few days, thanks for the invite, thanks for the food, thanks for the company, all appreciated. <laughs>